la 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 pues ahora ha entrado este. Vale, ¿qué le habéis dicho? ¿Cómo debe ser? ¿En más de lo que Pues en el. Perfecto, te oigo. Bien, gracias. Un poco de eco, eco, eco. Sí. Voy a llamar. Sí, Como tú hablas sí. eh, castellano perfectísimamente, pues, sí. 
¿De acuerdo? Puedes empezar cuando quieras. Eso es lo que vamos a hacer ahí. Bajamos de aquí para verlo un poco mejor. Bueno, Catarina. Todo bien. Uh, you can call me the chef when you ask uh, the question. And uh, today I will present my thesis, which is entitled From Liquid Networks and Complex Systems. And um, this will realize the thesis under the supervision of Dr. Jose Manuel Gutierrez and Juan Manuel Lopez. And the thesis consists of an introduction in which I will introduce the central theme, complex systems, the data sets uh, aligned with these uh, central systems. The methodology, objectives, result, and conclusion. So, this is about complex systems and especially explores interdisciplinary methodological synergy in the framework of complex systems. They appear in a wide range of disciplines. For example, in social sciences, in social systems, in spin, and, uh, spin glasses, in statistical physics, in the coral reef, in eco uh, and uh, the brain. And these systems um, are composed of many interactive elements in which collective phenomena can emerge. For example, in the brain, uh, many neurons interact and the conscience is, a, uh, is an um, uh, emerging phenomenon of that. But these phenomena cannot be inferred from the point of their constitutive elements. So this is important to know that uh, it's not a simple sum of two of them, of all those elements. They are also characterized by randomness and disorder and are difficult to understand and to model. So, for this reason, the main motivation was uh, to explore synergy between different rigid lines at the Institute of Physics of Cantabria in the context of complex systems. The first, statistical physics and nonlinear physics. The second, climate and data sciences, which also provided us with the main selected system of the season, the climate system. But, um, it also includes an application opportunity driven in the media. A posteriori, there was a recognition of this topic, which is uh, the Nobel Prize of Physics in 2021, this year. And it was wholly awarded to two climate scientists, uh, which is played on the left hand side, and one statistical physics uh, scientist. And the scope of this prize is um, illustrated in the green segment. Now, what does this uh, scientist do? The, the central theme of complex systems. And uh, in this part, the uh, climate system was also recognized as a complex system. So, um, this year's Nobel Prize recognized new methods for describing complex systems as joint two types of cohesion flow. And uh, it recognized uh, methods for describing complex systems and predicting their long term behavior. And it advocated for further multidisciplinary work. Which in our case is uh, data science or complex systems. Having viewed uh, the central theme, we're now going to um, um, uh, describe the two of the main selected systems of the season. And they are uh, illustrated in red. It is the climate system, uh, uh, then studied in the atmospheric sciences, and a gene regulatory system studied in genetics. Data sets uh, that are associated to these systems are typically of high dimension and low sample size. And statistical dependencies in those data sets are um, of various orders, so they are not only pairwise, which I already explained uh, in the context of the emerging phenomenon. Mm -hmm. The first selected system, the climate system. Well, in the climate system, a wide range of interacting physical and chemical variables appear. Like the temperature, the pressure, the wind, and they are all modeled in a physical in a model. Um, uh, these models are very uh, big and they are uh, named global climate models because they, uh, they are big because they com combine all those parts of differential equations in which the uh, variables figure. And they can, they can be solved dividing the globe in grid balls, three day grid balls. And then we have a temporal evolution for each of the variables in one grid ball. Now, such a uh, data set, um, uh, such a data set typically exists of uh, uh, many variables and uh, low uh, and small sample size. And for example, on the right hand side, we display the typical one, in which multiple, multiple sample variables are displayed on a 10 degree for 
are we preserving the climate experience from 1981 to 2010? So 30 years. We don't know work with the raw volumes, but we do work with the annual volume, which is the deviation of the mean of each month with respect to the mean of those 30 years. So we are talking about warning and feeding. In the data set, complex spatial dependencies exist, and they are modulated by short range and low range compression. For example, um, uh, a very well known oscillation pattern is the El Nino southern oscillation. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the, the black box over here sometimes warms, and which is also seen in the in temporal evolution and in time. And when it warms, it, um, it induces that uh, the local neighbors also work, but also there are effects of synchronization in distant regions, like uh, which is called climate teleconnected. For this reason, because these uh, uh, patterns are very difficult to model, but also very inter uh, interesting to understand the climate system, the climate system is really like a challenging complex system. The second system is a deep regulatory system, and they arise in uh, cells. Uh, actually, they um, determine the function of the cell or a bacterium. And for example, the Escherichia coli genome is displayed on the right hand side. And in this uh, in the cell, we have um, DNA. And um, this uh, uh, in the cell, uh, more than 4,000 protein coding genes um, are interacting with each other to determine the function of the cell. It's important to understand because uh, it also, if we have understanding of uh, their regulation, we can also understand um, the biological function and the regulation of disease in the environment. Well, to understand this um, uh, interaction, we rely on an exploratory number or two, which are microarrays, and they combine the simultaneous expression level of the genes that all, are all interacting. So, for example, in the road, we have over more than 4,000 genes, and the expression levels under the different circumstances are displayed in the form. This uh, database is again largely small n, so it uh, um, means that thousands of genes are, are connecting, but the experiments are expanded on time consuming, so we have only a few hundred of replica, small n. In the system, um, the, in, the, in the system of gene interactions, a key role um, is for the transcription factors. They are over here displayed in red. And these um, transcription factors will go proteins that have the power to control all their target genes um, by activating them or by repressing them. Then, uh, if a group is co expressed at the same time, we call that co expression, which is simultaneous expression. And this is an emergent phenomenon of the whole system. And we know that uh, transcription factors are underlying this, uh, this interaction, but we do not know if it is just a simple conclusion from multiple direct gene, gene interaction. Actually, we already suspect that this is not the case. And for this reason, DRF are now raised recognized as complex system. Let's go to the methodology. We have two of them. In this thesis, uh, the one is written in statistical physics. Uh, it's named complex networks. And this methodology was especially intended to treat complex systems. Whereas probabilistic network models have written in data science are, and are just more a generic modeling um, method for, for, for databases. And they have in common that they are both data driven. So they can learn models from them. As said, they start with the data. Then they both have a learning model, method, and they provide us with a network. The one, the complex network, the first, uh, later on provides with a complex model, and the second one, probabilistic networks, provided with a probabilistic model. So the combination of these two um, method, methods in this thesis are just in principle uh, complementary, and uh, there is space to, to investigate their um, uh, the, the room for, for uh, combination. So the first, correlation networks are special type of complex networks, and they are constructed by parallel correlation. Uh, it's a very simple construction method. If I have, uh, if my, if the correlation between node I and G is below a certain threshold, then we do not place next. If it is above, then we do place next. 
En deze informatie moet al werken in de adjacent domain. A good question would be which traffic should I choose to, um, to construct my network? For example, if we apply this methodology on a climate data set, we already see that with a high travel, we only obtain uh, a, a low number of edges, we play with the uh, letter E, and resulting in some local, local connections and a few data networks. Whereas if I lower my travel, then my network will be more dense, but also more redundancy gets in. Then, in the case of uh, correlation networks, there is a machinery that we call complex measure that can be applied on uh, those networks that arise. I just listed three of them, a uh, very uh, uh, recognized one. The degree uh, centrality is just the um, amount of edges that is linked to a node. The betweenness is um, in the quantity that measures how much information flow is going over that node. And the local clustering is a measure that measures kind of uh, uh, if you have the friends that you are also friends. So how how mm -hmm. cluster with your network, your local network. Um, applied again on the climate network or with 5,000 edges, we see that some of these measures can have in a region of very low um, low values, but other measures can be greater in the region. For example, over here the degree is low, not collecting many nodes. But it is important for the information flow of this network. And the local clustering is saying the same because the friends of this node of these nodes are not friends, so they have are very influential nodes in their own network. These um, the outcomes of these measures change also when the traffic is changing. This is important to know. Then the second methodology is our probabilistic networks. There are very methods, uh, methods rely on algorithms, they are more, they're more difficult. Um, they have two phases. Sometimes um, they are um, uh, executed at the same time. Structure learning and parallel learning. The structure learning provides for the network, and the parallel meeting learning will provide it with the probabilistic model. Um, in this case, I displayed a Bayesian network, which is a special case of a probabilistic network, and this is a directed network. But there also exist uh, undirected networks, and they have the name Markov network. And they rely on different algorithms. They each um, encode conditional independence with separation rules. For example, in a Markov network, node X and I are um, dependent um, because there are two paths that are joining them. But if I give evidence in W or Z, then the nodes will be both independent. In the case of the Bayesian network, it's a little different because the extra notion of directness. Uh, is an extra, uh, extra, extra, extra dimension of uh, independency and dependency encoding. So, in the case of uh, X and I, again, if um, Z is given, then they are dependent. But if the Z is not given, then they are independent. The probabilistic networks provide a probabilistic model. Um, this is different as the case of the complex networks, which is a joint probability density something P. And this model encodes the dependency that we already saw in the graph with the minimum number of parameters. The factorization of P can be derived from the graph. And in the case of a market network, so indirect network, this factorization relies on fleets. Um, it's a multiplication of the main function that uh, captured the, the behavior in the fleets. And a fleet is a fully connected subset, for example, X, Y, and Z. And in the case of Bayesian network, this factorization relies on parameter children. And for example, over here, uh, the child of uh, node set is W, and the parents of node set are X and Y. In this thesis, we mainly, um, we mainly treat uh, continuous data. And for this reason, we take the Gaussian distribution function as our standard. And in this case, the factorization of market network results in a particular matrix uh, in which direct dependencies uh, are encoded. And in the uh, case of the variation uh, network, which is built on Gaussian variation network, and then rely on the parameters beta and mu. And beta are the linear regression coefficients of each parent with respect to each uh, child, but of each child with respect to each parent. In the case of the climate network, if we apply, um, if we talk, if we apply the, the algorithm and we learn a variation network of the, of the climate data sets we already saw before, then um, 
you see, uh, then this is the output, which looks a little bit more random. Uh, hopefully, or later on, we will see if this uh, uh, is goes on structure. And then the um, um, GPD that is aligned with this network exists of uh, 648 uh, variables, of, and, and, and thus 648 uh, conditional probability density functions. The probabilistic model that is particular for probabilistic networks allows for probabilistic analyzing. And uh, we, uh, this means that we can calculate from this model uh, marginal and conditional probability. So, um, in the case of the climate data network side, uh, net network data set, we can, uh, it's an interesting function to see if some node is uh, have a chance of warming given the evidence in another node. In this case, of a warming, or if a node is cooling, it is given evidence in the same node. Well, the output for such um, uh, for these uh, for the population of those conditional probabilities are displayed over here. Um, the evidence was given in this node, it's D, and we see that there is local propagation, but there is also a more distant propagation uh, with a high probability or low temperature, and an even more distant uh, propagation with. Um, uh, probability on uh, temperature rising. But then um, we are now going to formulate the objectives. Our goal, the goal of the state is to combine complex and probabilistic network systems in order to better understand model and predict complex systems from data. And to achieve this goal, we have formulated three objectives from which the first two have to do with application of probabilistic networks in complex systems data, because this is what something new. Um, the Bayesian network learning method uh, were never applied in high dimensional data, uh, neither with um, um, a complex dependency structure. And the uh, market network had been applied on high dimensional data, especially in genetics. Um, so, uh, after having uh, investigated the application of Bayesian network, we are going to compare the two um, in the framework of. Um, in the framework of probabilistic networks and complex system data. The last objective um, is to um, investigate the synergy between complex and probabilistic networks. So, in this objective, we join the correlation network to our scheme, and we are going to try to um, find the synergy which hopefully uh, can help us to better understand the model and predict complex systems from the data. Uh, these objectives are carried out on the, mostly on climate data. Uh, objective 1, 2, and 3 are all carried out on climate data. But objective uh, 2 is also carried out on genetic data. Uh, why? Because more of network uh, applications already existed for these type of databases. And um, also in context of complex networks. So um, the result would have more impact if we would uh, uh, compare the two by using the network networks in, uh, in, uh, on the, in the context of genetic data. The results. Um, of the first objective, which was about to test the applicability of Gaussian data network structure learning algorithms in complex system data. This um, objective was carried out in a study in which we investigated two types of data sets, as said, the real climate data, but also data sets that were generated from synthetic biological networks. Um, they are publicly available. And they, these are displayed over here. There, there are four of them. One is, uh, is named E. coli 70, which is inspired on the uh, Echinistra coli genome, in which we also have the real data set. And the other three are based are um, constructed uh, from plant gene genetics. For these data sets, we know the, the amount of variables, the dimension, we know the amount of edges in the network, and we know the amount of parameters in the Bayesian network, in the Gaussian Bayesian network. Uh, for the real claim data, on the other hand, we only know the amount of uh, grid boxes, but we do not know the amount of edges. Neither the amount of parameters. The structural learning algorithm will be off to learn this. So there are three types of algorithms that we are going to compare. First, function based algorithms. Uh, the second is score based algorithms. And the third is hybrid, hybrid algorithms. 
The first one for the date algorithms, for example, P system and GS, uh, and, uh, they start with the network and then they go moving links, uh, applying independency tests. And after that, they will set the arc direction, direction in the network. Um, in the case of the Gaussian uh, data, we uh, normally rely on, uh, on the G squared test, um, which is a log library ratio test and uh, rejects the takes and hypothesis depending on our significant level alpha that we choose. For based algorithms, on the, on the other hand, um, they start with a network and they add links that optimize a certain score function. This, um, this score function can be divided in local parts. And uh, in each, um, for each uh, local part, we have a fit to data um, part, which is the log likelihood of the data in the, the, under the terms. Uh, and we have, uh, the, we have part of penalized amount of parameters. Um, and um, this is seen because the amount of parameters over here is, um, is not the way data. Hybrid algorithms, on the other hand, um, uh, they are constructed from both uh, one type of algorithm, and uh, the skeletal is found normally in token based algorithm, where the arc direction the direction in the network are simply score based score based part of the algorithm. So how can we um, honestly compare those different types of algorithms? Um, well, first we should know that the score based approach approach selects a graph. G plus over G minus, which only differs with a single R uh, between you know, G and Y, if the big score of the first graph is bigger than the big score of the second graph. And if the problem rate is uh, inequality, we end up uh, with this inequality at the right hand side. And uh, if we take a more uh, close look at this inequality, we see that it's, um, uh, this um, appears to be a log likelihood ratio test statistic. Just with a significant, uh, different significant, uh, significant travel chosen. So, um, what we are going to do is we are going to insert a matching set of criteria and we adapt the alpha, the um, significant level alpha, to this, um, to this travel. And then we are able to honestly compare the two types of algorithms. Um, so the experiment set up for synthetic bias networks was that we generate 20 samples for each of the four networks, from small samples to big samples, um, and this will would allow for minimal, meaningful comparisons between bias networks of different size. Then we use the networks uh, using all the, um, uh, the algorithms, algorithms with different matching criteria, and then we evaluate their accuracy. As we have the true network available, this accuracy can be uh, calculated uh, with a st structural hanging distance uh, between the layer and the true network, which is approximately the, four, um, uh, the amount of different links between two networks. And if the distance is lower, then this uh, the accuracy is higher. Um, then we also evaluate the speed, which uh, and we use that uh, we, we do that using the number of calls to the test or score. Again, low impact. So we displayed the results uh, of two of the networks of the form on the right hand side, the equally network and the margin area network. But these results can be uh, extrapolated to the four network. And then we also displayed the results for small samples over here and for large samples on the right hand side. And in each window, uh, the, the accuracy is on the i axis and the speed is on the uh, right uh, on the x axis. And again, lower is better in, in, um, in both cases. So, and the different types of networks are uh, denoted with different types of colors. Store based are red tinted, alternate based are blue tinted, and hybrids are green tinted. And uh, we see our first observation that no systematic difference for small and large samples appear. Uh, and we are interested in small samples because in context of complex systems, we normally uh, treat small samples. Uh, a second conclusion is for um, synthetic bias networks that score based has uh, generally more performance on accuracy than both quantum based and hybrid algorithms. This is carried seen over here, they are higher in that way. And why? Because score based tend to include much larger number of arcs, and many of those arcs will be false positives and this decrease the performance on the structural handling group. 
In the case of the real world pricing, that would be a similar setup, but it also differs a little bit because uh, we only have one data set, which is a small sample. But you will obtain network of different complexity by introducing a sparse parameter gamma. And uh, what is our approach? Now that is the big T squared big uh, matching uh, area to the big gamma T squared big gamma matching area. And for different levels of sparsity, we are going to learn uh, graphs with all uh, algorithms. Then the evaluation of the approach is also different because as we do not call this a true model, um, we are going to evaluate a currency with the likelihood of the data with respect to the learned Bayesian network. And also, we will um, apply the logistic inference on the network with a MIA related evidence, which we also already saw before in the methodology. The, the evaluation of speed, however, is uh, done on the same manner. So, the results for the new data that are created on the right hand side, um, the, these are the results of accuracy. Uh, in the upper window, we see the size, and the lower window, we see the score, the number of likelihood. And um, we, uh, as, as well uh, as, uh, as we can see here, there's a red line. And at the right hand side, we are in the range of uh, high gamma, so sparse networks. And at the left hand side, we are in the range of low gamma, so more dense networks. And uh, what do we see? Person based at the large networks because they have the large number of arcs at the right hand side of the red line. Um, but, um, um, and they have also the highest log likelihood in this range. But if you go at the left hand side, they cascade. They are not able to learn network for um, that uh, ask for density. And uh, as, as clear, they also do not have to score for in this way. Where the score is on the other on the, on the, on the hand, um, they do not perform super well on the right hand side in the range of low uh, density networks, but they do on the left hand side uh, because they learn more arcs, they include more arcs, which also um, makes that the lot likelihood increases. And hybrids perform in between the two. Uh, with respect to the speed, score that algorithm always are the fastest for complex data. So, if we now go over to the probabilistic inference, we, gave, we, are given, we are going to give a mean like evidence in the, in the networks. So, we are, simulate high, we are going to simulate high temperatures in the East Pacific. Then, we see that uh, the biggest uh, networks obtained with score based, uh, obtained with some complaint based and hybrid uh, algorithms. Uh, are not able to propagate this evidence to distant regions. Why? Because they are not, they do not include sufficient large distance uh, links. Whereas a medium sized score network is able because uh, it, uh, it does include large links, which are uh, colored in black. Um, this is critical because in a complex system, uh, we want to model emergent phenomena. And we do not only want to model local um, local correlations or local, local dependency. And the, uh, a minimum of number of arcs is thus needed for the propagation of evidence of teleconnection. So um, uh, these conclusions that we uh, uh, the results we saw before are gathered in uh, an article with the title Who Learns Better by Ancient Network Structure. Accuracy and speed of structural linear algorithms. In this article, also a um, 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 study on discrete by the network cluster form. And um, we saw that um, our, our um, contribution to this article was the real data set and the adaption of the score and the test to the real data set and the analysis of that. And the conclusion that we draw, draw was um, that the climate network data induces topology that is different from synthetic data production by a network. And for these reasons, although score based algorithms perform worse for synthetic data sets, they perform best on the climate complex data set. And they are because they are unique in learning networks in which higher order dependencies occur. So Let's go to the results of objective two, in which we are going to compare the performance of Gaussian linear network to the state of the art precision market network for modeling and predicting in complex systems. As said before, we are going to um, execute this uh, study on genetic data because market precision networks are the standard in, in uh, genetic data and they are already studied uh, in this field. 
And uh, at the right hand side, we again explain uh, the two types. And um, we are, in, especially, we're going to um, compare four algorithms. Uh, first, the Lasso algorithm, which was already, um, uh, was already demonstrated to be capable to deal with high dimensionality, but also two modifications of the Lasso that uh, aim to integrate complex dependency structures. The one, uh, uh, the first, Hedgy Lasso, uh, integrates regular terminal nodes to high degree. Uh, and the second one um, uh, integrates an inhomogeneous degree distribution, a power law, and um, is for this reason called scale to the last one. Because uh, these, um, these power laws are uh, characteristic for uh, networks with this behavior, scale to behavior. On the other hand, for the Gaussian gauging network, we uh, use the Scorbitt high, Scorbitt high climbing algorithm that we saw in objective one was. Uh, was able to perform good on complex system data. Um, it's good to know that the, the latter two are only tested on synthetic data sets, so it was an extra dimension of the study. How is their performance on a new data set? The approach in the study was to uh, transform the Bayesian networks to market networks because market networks are the benchmark, and we uh, should compare um, the two types of algorithms. In the field where most uh, investigation is done. And um, how are we going to do that? Well, this is it's done easily because there is an analytic transformation for, uh, between the two. Uh, this yields on the one hand modulation and on the other hand transformation of parameters. Modulation is um, the transformation of the graph structure. So if we start with a direct model, we moralize the network, which uh, means marrying uh, the parents of a child. And we obtain um, a market network in which the dependencies are preserved. And um, uh, the transformation of the parameters can be done with an analytical, um, um, an analytical equation, uh, which is valid in the case of Gaussian behavior network. The drawback of this process is that all the dependencies are preserved, so independencies will be lost with this transformation from Bayesian network to market network. So we performed this uh, study on the genetic data, um, but only on a subset of this uh, data for which we have evidence on uh, uh, interaction between transcription factors and their target genes. And this subset consists of um, 1600, about 1600 genes. And we were going to learn market networks with all algorithms from, uh, of different sizes. And how can we learn how can we learn the algorithm uh, the network in a different size? But this is just because uh, because we vary the initial parameters which uh, which the um, algorithms are computed. The first evaluation um, is done with respect to the evidence about um, about transcriptional uh, revelation that we have that we are that we display on the right hand side. And uh, the accuracy is uh, measured by the amount of two positive edges. That are found by the algorithm, um, and with the amount of hubs that uh, or the amount of no, the amount of transcription factors that the algorithm finds, which is an indication of the hub structure, which is integrated in the network. Uh, note: not all true edges um, are documented in that evidence. So it's, it is possible that an algorithm finds more uh, edges which are not documented, but that are true. Again, we use the log likelihood also to quantify how well the model explains the data in terms of log likelihood or the available data given the particular formation of the model. The results on our are displayed at the right hand side. On the i axis, we see the log likelihood, and on the x axis, we see the size of the network learned by the algorithm. And the networks are colored in terms of the algorithm that learned them. So, uh, how climbing is purple, whereas uh, G Lasso is. Uh, red and the um, uh, three types of HD lasso with different initial parameters are colored in green, orange, and gray. And finally, the still 3D lasso is colored in blue. What do we see quickly from this plot? And how can we already always explains better the data instances? And that especially the likelihood accelerates for sparse networks and separates for big networks. Whereas G is very slow and linear when uh, its initial parameter uh, decreases. And uh, how they, how the, the algorithms, the network learned with G-Lasso, 
um, always explain the data uh, is better than Gilato, but worse than how climbing. And uh, the skill free Gilato always explains the data is better than worse. Um, with respect to the two positive and the different factors found in the network, I say I count is almost uh, I say I count most PX, which is seen over here, until a network size of 5,000 is used. And then the last one uh, is better. Um, also for spark networks, uh, I'm saying about more true positive, uh, positive things. I, I uh, changed um, the result for the, uh, this and the true positives are uh, visualized uh, in the curve, whereas the true uh, the fiction factors are visualized with the number. So the true positives uh, are encountered more quickly by um, how until a next size of 5,000. And um, this can uh, have to do with the fact that the transcriptal factors uh, uh, are also encountered more quickly by uh, the health planning algorithm. Um, whereas the loss of encounters most uh, uh, through process in big network, but uh, the amount of uh, transcriptal factor um, is encountered slowly. Uh, the same is true for HD Glossal. Sometimes, uh, in, for example, the green. Um, the green uh, HCV also encounters a lot of transcription factors, but um, uh, not always more true positive. So this is an indication that although it encounters hubs, maybe these hubs are not accurate. Whereas still free Dilasso encounters always less PF and always less PP. The conclusion of these results are gathered in an article during complex intelligence structure of being regular to a network from a high dimensional micro L data to Gaussian Bayesian network. This article is right now under revision, um, and we hope to update uh, it soon. And um, the conclusions, uh, the major groups are that the half and algorithm naturally includes complex dependency structure of the complex uh, gene system is that may consist of help or uh, other uh, characteristics without forging a particular structure in output. Whereas the lasso, as I the lasso and H the lasso forcing a particular structure in output model unnecessary dependency that for the, the transcriptional interaction that supply the key information in the gene regulatory system. So uh, with respect to this conclusion, the GLS is either not fully characterized by the characteristics they uh, try to impose, <coughs> or they fail to faithfully model this characteristics so highly dependent data. So, having seen objectives one and two, uh, we are now able to, um, to see the result of objective three, which is to study the added value of the synergistic probabilistic complex network approach. To explore more and predict features of complex systems. And how are we going to do well, this? We are going to do this extending uh, the probabilistic networks beyond, beyond, their, um, beyond their normal scope, including um, uh, complex measures um, uh, on, in their analyzers. And on the other hand, uh, we are going to extend the correlation network with the probabilistic model that is uh, inspired from the probabilistic network approach. We start with uh, the number one, the probabilistic model for correlation network. And this motivates also in climate because in climate um, uh, in literature it's reported that it's difficult to choose the uniform uniform criterion for a travel. And in climate in the literature, it's also reported that teleconnections are affected if the travel is chosen below some maximum bound. But this results uh, in reversing the topology and asks for a, a good or post processing. Uh, or, and the remove of redundant links. So we can extend um, those correlation network with probabilistic model, which is a simple process because the most common representation of the Gaussian GPD in, is the following, and it relies on that covariance matrix or the correlation matrix in the case of uh, standardized uh, data of anomaly. And um, Recall that the correlation networks are constructed with a threshold of tau over an empirical correlation matrix. Um, and we can take this, uh, cor this, um, uh, this empirical correlation matrix, a uh, threshold of correlation, empirical correlation matrix, we, take, we can take this as an estimate for the um, covariance matrix uh, that is used in this representation of the Gaussian GPD. It means no edge in the ground. 
uh, an element in the in the in, in covariant matrix will be zero, and an action as well uh, will mean that the element in the covariant matrix is correlate is pairwise correlation between the two nodes. Uh, it's important to note that in generally this construction met method of this estimate is not generally well defined. So we are going to take the closest matrix in the convenient one that is uh, closest to this uh, estimate. We will work with that. Then if we see what kind of probabilistic correlation network uh, this um, gives, uh, then it's good to know that this uh, does not yield a factorization of the probability distribution function. And uh, this implies that we cannot um, we cannot figure out conditional dependence or independence from the bottom. For example, X and Y are connected uh, because they are related with an X. But uh, as if you know evidence of Y and uh, the, uh, Z, Z, then we do not know if they maintain their dependencies or if they evolve independent. This is not, we are not able to uh, read this from the bottom. So uh, why are we uh, going to do this? Well, we hope with the probabilistic model of correlation networks to see where this redundancy gets into the graph and, um, and to compare the Bayesian network to the correlation network uh, with the correlation network and see in which um, in which uh, level they perform better or worse uh, relation network or complex so uh, our approach is to do an accuracy evaluation as seen before um, we uh, evaluate accuracy with the likelihood and the probability inference and we um, the learning methods are as follows we, we construct correlation networks in from a very in a very varying range that we vary the travel from from one to zero from uh, an empty network to a complete network and we extend them with a probabilistic model as seen before and then we learn gaussian Bayesian network with the score rates of the high say that we want to uh, for the best and we uh, learn networks of various size varying the amount of iteration from zero to uh, until that the standard gets for compost which is uh, about eight thousand patches the results uh, for the slide are taken on the right hand side on the x-axis, the number of edges is displayed, whereas on the uh, i-axis, the uh, of lightning is displayed, and uh, the Bayesian network results are colored in blue, whereas the correlation networks are colored in purple. Um, we see that Bayesian networks explain the two basic better, as far as network and correlation networks do, uh, but that the uh, correlation networks adding more actions in the end will. Um, Obtain the same value of, value of the Bayesian estimation network too. So the question is, how what is the generation capacity of Bayesian network and correlation network? So uh, for to uh, investigate this, we call the cross validation, um, and uh, this means that we divided the data into two halves, uh, one for training, one for validation. We trained the, the network with training data set, and we validated with the validation network uh, data set. We see that the, the, the training curve uh, looks very similar uh, to the curve before, but that the validation curve has a very different structure. What is happening? Well, um, the network, um, this data is explained well with networks up to 1800 edges, but after the explicatory uh, capacity of um, these networks uh, is starting to decrease. The same is true for the for the correlation network, but it does not decrease so uh, fast. If we uh, zoom out, then we see that uh, it also decreases. It decreases, it decreases uh, a lot, and um, it's important to know that uh, the validation curve of the correlation network never reaches the validation curve of the, of the network. This means that the correlation network will not generalize to new data. And also that actually high fire correlation can be redundant, although they are included very early in the construction process of a correlation network. As said, we're also going to perform the evidence preparation. And for this, we choose the statistical optimum. So that we saw uh, here in the, in the tops, uh, the, the best uh, performing statistical uh, network. And uh, we are providing the same evidence as before in the new regular region. 
And we see that there's a typical author with uh, agonal access is able to propagate this effort, whereas there's a typical author of correlation network is not able to propagate this evidence, only locally. Then we are going to uh, recommend the second step, which was to um, uh, extend the probabilistic network with a complex model. Why could this be interesting? Well, in the context of complex system, uh, we have uh, our system high dimensional. And for example, uh, to ask uh, meaningful questions to the system, we want to know the nodes which possibly could have a, a big impact on the system. And these nodes, communities, uh, or information cannot can be revealed using uh, Bayesian networks, or at least that is what we hope. For this, it's needed that a uh, population network has a complex structure, a complex dependency structure. And this was tested um, uh, with global measure. Uh, in this in the figure on the right, we see a uh, result of global uh, triangular clustering, which is um, a measure, uh, globally measure how clustered are your nodes in the, in the network. And um, this uh, quantity was um, was um, displayed in terms of the number of edges. So um, again, the Bayesian networks are colored in green and the correlation networks are colored in purple. But we added two other types of network. First, uh, random, a random network in which uh, edges were placed aleatorily, and the second uh, what is a regular lattice. Which um, uh, connects the neighbors of a node and in, the, in, the, in this network and the neighbors of the neighbors of the node in the second ne network and so on. And we see that the correlation network has a very different structure with respect to these, those uh, standard models that do not possess a complex dependency structure. And this is very, uh, this is a very different structure, very different curve is uh, displayed. But we also see that the Bayesian network. Uh, although less pronounced, also have different structure. So we, um, uh, we suspect them to be complex. And uh, for example, the uh, method that we saw before of about 800 edges over here, and it is, has a uh, non trivial uh, global triangular cluster and also non trivial other, uh, other global uh, complex, uh, value other complex, uh, global complex method. So is a BI complex? Yes, we think. And are complex nodes useful on this um, on this network? Yes, because for example, applying the between the centrality that uh, provides with information about the information flow, we see that it highlights some key regions in climate. And uh, one of them is the mean region, which we made evident before. But the um, Atlantic Ocean, the East, uh, the West uh, uh, Atlantic Ocean and the Philippines are also uh, highlighted as highly um, important regions that would be key for progressive inference. Uh, moreover, if we apply a community vision of the network, um, we can extract information about the clusters in the network, uh, which uh, regions of the network are typically clustered. And uh, this also shows that the uh, Bayesian networks are complex because they cluster in a, in a realistic manner. Uh, for example, our uh, cluster the, the Pacific, but also the land over the teleconnection between the Indian Ocean and Atlantic Ocean. And this cluster is um, with the community which is much more difficult to realize in correlation networks. In the statistic correlation, uh, statistic optimal correlation networks, it's very difficult to realize because. We are only, yeah, it's only providing one uh, community. In a bigger network, uh, we can extract uh, some useful information. However, um, this information that we uh, here uh, extracted with using 15 communities could also be extracted with uh, a relation that is only using eight communities. Why? Because there are uh, nodes that are redundant or irrelevant that need to have to possess our own community. So a potential application of those changes that we have explored uh, lies in uh, probabilistic complex networks, um, applying them on, uh, in the context of the climate model in the uh, project, say we project. And these, this is a worldwide uh, organization that deals with more energy methods for climate projects. So what, um, uh, how, this is, how is this realized if dealing with model uncertainty? Uh, a lot of institutes of the world are uh, each contributing with its own global climate model. 
which is uh, displayed over here, illustrated over here. Uh, and these institutes all um, integrate their own components in that model that could differ one of, uh, from another. And this also implies a different prognostic uh, for the future and also a different, um, different uh, value for the uh, past. And, and the problem, if you want to combine those models for future uh, to, to lower the uncertainties that could, uh, uh, could be, um, uh, could be, um, uh, be the result of the application of a uh, global climate model to lower those uncertainties, the normal uh, approach is to combine all those models and take the meaning of them. But the question is how independent or how, how democratic is it weighted? Because uh, many components that exist in one or another model are replicated in other models. So we want to know to, uh, how, how much differ these, uh, these models, how independent are they really? And what are we going to do if we're going to uh, learn from this complex network, radiation networks in this case, from historical simulations of 33 of those GCMs that are participating in uh, the same five um, in the comparison project, it's back to fifth phase, to characterize model dependency. And um, we are going to do so with application of complex and probabilistic measures. For example, if we take three of them, those of those institutes that participate, uh, the BNU, uh, the BNU, which is um, which is um, realized in China, and two access models which are realized in Australia, then uh, if we um, construct the graph, the radiation graph of those the data sets provided by those models, then we already see that they leave us some fingerprints of the data set. In this case, in the rows, I, um, I divided the, um, the graph in, in three parts, in which in, in the rows, in the first row, we only see uh, short distance range, uh, links. In the second row, we see intermediate links. And in the third row, we see large distance uh, links. And we see that the BNU uh, has a very different uh, link distribution or X uh, distance distribution that, that access the two active model has. Uh, these two are very similar, but also intuitive because they are um, they are realized in the same entity. And um, to have a more quantitative um, um, distribution of those type of different types of models, we um, can apply probabilistic uh, measure uh, because uh, this is the approach of a probabilistic complex network approach. That we are not uh, um, we are not only uh, are able to uh, analyze our network with complex network measures, but also with probabilistic network measures. And in this case, we chose a, a, a very easy um, distance measure, a probabilistic uh, distribution distance measure, which measures the distance between two probabilistic, probabilistic distribution functions. And uh, in this case, the Batagaria distance. And so if we take um, the distribution functions of all of those uh, competing models, and uh, we calculate pairwise distance with the distance measure between the models, then uh, we obtain this matrix. The results are, are, uh, are displayed in this matrix. And uh, um, obscure um, black boxes or um, dark colors um, are they, um, um, they significate, they signify uh, low distance. So on the diagonal, uh, in which all the Paris correlation is uh, calculated uh, from each model with itself, this is zero and the color is uh, very obscure. And what do we see? Well, first, uh, with respect to those three models, that these are very uh, different. They have very different behavior with respect to all the other models. And if we compare the axis with the BNP, we see that there's a very large distance between the two probabilistic and uh, very large probabilistic distance. On the other hand, we see also that uh, models of the same institute normally are close together, uh, which is intuitive, but it can be the case that models of the same institute have a significant arbitrary model change, which is a determinant model component for, for temperature volume, and then um, they are uh, farther, further apart from each other. And it can also occur that 
um, some models that are not realized in the same institute are very close to each other because they rely on that same atmospheric model. The conclusions of this uh, third objective mainly were, um, were uh, written in the article The Publicity Backbone of Data Driven Complex Networks, for example, in climate. And the conclusions uh, from this objective were mainly that the correlation network, although we extend them with the probabilistic model, they do not provide uh, a topological informative network in which emerging phenomena of the system can be uh, explored in a statistical significant way. Whereas Bayan, Bayan networks are sparse and they are capable of being related to new, new data, but at the same time, they have a complex topology and the statistical optimum contains maximal topology of logical information. And for this reason, we consider them as the published backbone of the complex system that was earlier uh, analyzed with correlation network. Uh, at the same time, the Bayan can be analyzed with complex network measure. To identify interesting reasons for adverse population, and as we saw, they are promising to treat uh, open climate problems. So, finally, we draw shortly some conclusions. Uh, the, uh, main, the disease explored the methodological synergies between complex networks and probabilistic networks in order to better understand more adverse complex systems from data. And what does it mean for probabilistic network practitioners? Well, um, if you want to apply um, your algorithm on complex data, score based validation network algorithms will offer the most sound approach. Uh, if there is no initial information advance around the structure, and where I state the R market networks are for less. And also, the complex measures will do useful information to guide, guide your prior rule of your holistic network. Whereas for complex network practitioners, um, we see that the correlation networks have, uh, are efficient and that there are benefits inherent to construction uh, to their construction method with relying on various association. Uh, but that the uh, auxiliary growth of a variation network is an alternative for a correlation network because they are generalizable on the one hand, but uh, have a complex topology on the other, hand, and they uh, provide you the notion of probability. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. Gracias, Lo más normal sería primero, si alguien de, de la sala, doctor, quiere hacer alguna pregunta. Como eso no suele ser normal, empezamos con las preguntas de los, de los expertos que hemos traído en cada uno de los demás en los que está. Y entonces va a empezar José. Entonces, el, el, el idioma, pues lo que cada uno quiera aquí, pues una república. <risa> Okay. Uh, well, I, I wrote the paper in, in English and then I will change the okay? But um, the first thing is just to, to say that congratulations because the work has been enormous and I think that is quite complete and also quite coherent. Right? Sometimes in the test, it's a difficult thing to, to, to do. Uh, in your case, most, most, most of, the, of the questions is to follow the line, and uh, that's also very nice. Also, the writing of the test was, uh, was quite good, so it was easy to, to follow. But I have some questions, and the questions come from the fact that I didn't understand some parts, right? So it's more collective than any kind of comment or, <laughs> yeah. or anything like that. Um, okay, so that's what I said. But have you cut it? Yeah, you cut it, right? Yeah, you cut it. Yeah, you cut it. Yeah, you cut it. Yeah, you cut it. Uh, 
lo tengo aquí, en la pantalla también. Voy a buscar en la pantalla. 